everyone, it's Lauren Ray, and this is Skein 7 of the All Wound Up podcast. It is Tuesday, June 26th, and this is my third attempt to record this. Um, just had, like, all kinds of crazy things. First, I realized my eyeliner was incredibly uneven, and apparently that, you know, concerned me to the point that I had to start over. Then my mother texted me, and here I am now. So hopefully I don't have any weird stuff that happens, um this time that I'm recording. So, um, again, it's been about a month. Um, I really didn't feel that I had much of anything to talk about. I didn't think that anybody would want to watch just the whip parade. Um, I hadn't bought anything. I hadn't gotten anything fiber related. Um, it was just whips, 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 which isn't a bad thing, but it is what it is. Um, so this past month, it has been the wrap up of all the SATs and ACTs. So I had weekend proctoring for standard testing with uh, extended time. And then I had in school proctoring several days to uh, help out some kids who can't take the test uh, on the weekend with the general population. So kids who need a reader, people who get um, stop the clock breaks, all kinds of things that um, really are exceptions to the rules for the SAT and the ACT and their special ed accommodations or health accommodations. And, uh, yeah, so had to do that. And then later on this week, my mother is going to be having her first ever cataract surgery. So she's only in her sixties. She's very worried about it. And, um, we just have to go get it taken care of. So I'm going to be driving down to Long Island to help her out and then on Saturday it is opening day for a swap that I've uh, participated in. I already know who my swap partner was who sent me my gift so hi Heidi. Um, Most people don't know though. Heidi forgot to not put her name on the package so I'm very excited to know who my gifter was because I know that she's got some awesome goodies in that package so Suzanne from Groovy Hughes and Thaddeus from Archaeology Knits are going to be coming up this Saturday and I may, uh, we're going to go live on Facebook um, in the group that the swap is part of, but I may also record our swap opening um, as a mini skein um, and have it up on the channel, but I might not. We'll have to see. I know I'll talk about the stuff that I got from my swap partner and I already know that there is one really big really squishy massive 600 yard skein of DK Rambouillet and I'm so excited about it I want to see it in person still sealed up in the box so um also over the last month was worldwide knit in public day so Suzanne Thad and I went to Starbucks and we knit in public which for me honestly is every day but not everybody goes out and knits in public every day and uh we did it so that was fun um not so much fun in the last month as you are all aware um there were several by several i mean two major um celebrity suicides and i want to say um for myself seeing seeing things like that hits extra close to home because I have been under treatment for depression and anxiety since I was a teenager. And knowing that there are people and people who are well-loved public figures who feel like they don't have anyone that they can reach out to um, and that they are so afraid of the stigma that's attached to mental illness that they don't want to reach out and get help, it's it's very difficult coming from where I come from, coming from being under treatment for these conditions, that um, it's very difficult to hear that people feel so at a loss that they can't reach out to someone. So if you are in a dark place, if you are feeling like you just can't go on, like it's all too much, you really should reach out to someone. Um, It's best if you reach out to a professional, and I will be putting the National Suicide Prevention Hotline down in the show notes, Um, but even if you just reach out to a friend, 
or a family member or a loved one or anybody that you know um, and tell them how you're feeling so that they can help you get the help that you need when you feel like you can't get it yourself. Um, you should do that, please. Um, yeah, so reach out if you need to, people. Um, do what you need to do, but don't do that. Um, it's never so bad that you can't recover. It's never actually as dark as it seems. There will always be somebody there for you, even if it is just a stranger's voice on a hotline. Um, just keep that in mind, and I will have the link down in the down bar. Um, anyway, <laughs> social media. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as, look, I pointed to the right side first this time, on Instagram as Romero, and you can find me on Ravelry as Mistral. So those are the two best places to find me. I um, notice when I have Ravelry messages, I try to keep my inbox over there clean. Um, so if you wanted to send me a message, that might be the best way to go about doing it. There is also a Facebook page for the All Wound Up podcast, and we have a Ravelry group for the All Wound Up podcast. And both the Facebook page and the Ravelry group can be found by searching on the respective platforms for All Wound Up podcast. But that info will be linked in the show notes below. So, um, administrative stuff. We are still in the midst of the summer shawl along. The first month of that event is coming to a close, but there will still be two more months after this um, for you to participate. So, the rules are any shawl, any weight of yarn, any craft, as long as you use 400 yards of whatever weight of yarn you have chosen to use. So, if you want to use super bulky, go for it. Just make sure you use 400 yards. You can knit, you can crochet, you can weave. I don't care as long as you make the shawl out of yarn at least 400 yards. Um, I am co-hosting this event with Suzanne of Groovy Hughes Fibers. You can find her portion of the uh, knit along and I am very active over there on that as well. Um, you can find that in her Facebook group and that is the grooviest of them all, Friends of Groovy Hughes Fibers, and I will have the link for that below in the show notes. You must complete your shawl by August 31st and it must have been cast on on or after June 1st. So I do have the prize for my end of the knit along. I don't know what Suzanne's giving away but I am going to be giving away a skein of yarn over New York yarn and this is her Times Square sock yarn base and it is the I Love New York t-shirt line colorways. And this is the yellow I Love New York t-shirt. So basically it's supposed to be a yellow t-shirt with the I Love New York logo is the red heart and the black lettering. So it's got black and red speckles on it. Um, she does actually, if you wanted to um, go online and check it out, she does have a fade kit of these. It's like a pastel rainbow, pink, peach, yellow, sage green, uh, light blue and purple. It's really pretty. Um, and they do all have the red and black speckles on them, so they're pretty unified. Jessie Kozniak is the dyer behind Yarn Over New York, and she recently suffered a tremendous loss of inventory uh, when somebody stole two large size boxes out of her apartment complex, apartment buildings hallway. Um, so she, I went online and I decided to help her out by purchasing this skein, and that this will be our giveaway. Uh, she does actually, if you wanted to help out, have two shawl patterns that she has for sale on Ravelry. So if you wanted to help Jessie out, a good way to do that, purchase her shawl pattern. She already did the work of designing it. She already posted it on Ravelry and they are there. They both qualify for the shawl along because they both use at least 400 yards. So it's pretty good. All right, finished objects. I have two mostly finished objects. This is a second Coriolis Effect cowl that I knit for myself. I had originally made one for my swap partner and um, I decided after doing that that I really needed to have one for myself. So this is Fido Yarns and it is um, 
Fido Yarns in the Burr base, and this is the Orchid colorway. I bought this several years ago at the um, at a small business Saturday, um, at a store that was going out of business. There used to be a yarn shop in Babylon, New York, which is on the south shore of Long Island. Village Knitter, it was called, and they were closing. I saw this skein during their going out of business sale, and I had to have it. Um, I didn't have any idea what project to make with it at the time, so it sat in my stash for a good long time, and now here it is. So it still needs to be blocked. I don't think I want to block it too aggressively because I like the size and I like the drape pretty well the way it is, and it needs the ends woven in. But this is the Coriolis Effect Cowl. It's by Lars Reigns. He is a local designer behind modern Lopi design. So a lot of what he does are the Icelandic sweaters with the beautiful um, color work yokes. But this item is a very simple one. It's made to be knit out of sport weight. This is sort of between a sport and a DK. Um, and it's a two row repeat. So you do your ribbing on either end, but all the stretch in the middle, it's too hot to wear it or I would wear it. Um, all the stretch in the middle is just two rows. So it looks as though you're working around and shifting to get these um, tilting columns, but in actuality, you are just knitting two rows and it's an optical illusion, which like I said the last time um, I had one of these to show is what the Coriolis effect is. So I have that item finished and it'll be ready for me to wear um, in the cooler weather. Right now it's about 85 degrees and I don't want to wear a cowl. So it's going off to the side. I will um, block it, weave in the ends, and put it in my cool weather clothing bin. Um, my next finished object <laughs> would be finished if I hadn't lost at Yarn Chicken. So this finished object, not finished object, is in my Darn Yarn MN bag. It's the Constellations, they're the Zodiac Constellations actually, uh, and it's got a wool felt bottom with a vegan leather strap. Okay. So my first shawl for the summer shawl along is or was the Hop Brook shawl by Bob Bonnie Seno. And I knit the Hop Brook shawl on size five needles as the pattern calls for. Um, but I ran out of yarn. So my, my yarn that I was using was the Smushy and Groovin base by Groovy Hughes Fibers. And it's in a one of a kind pink colorway, which really I bought, um, while I was working at my local yarn shop or what used to be my local yarn shop before I moved up here. And, um, I really just liked it and had to come home with me. It was before I was really friends with Suzanne. So it's been around for a while. <laughs> Um, and the Hop Brook shawl is a long skinny crescent shaped shawl and it has points of lace um, that are knit throughout and when you block it they open up really nicely and there's sort of a little flower detail you're looking at the wrong side I'm sorry um, there's sort of a little flower detail in the middle that opens up very nicely I have knit this shawl before uh, for a friend as a gift out of a silver yarn, but I decided that for myself I was going to use this pretty pink. Unfortunately, I ran out and I wanted to finish it, so I decided, you know what, I'm going to try mixing colors, I'm going to, no, I don't like it um, at all. I like this yarn, I just don't like it. Um, alone hanging out on the tip here. So you can see I was about 23 yards, 23 stitches or 23 rows, 20 seconds to get that from the end uh, when I ran out, but I couldn't make it. So Suzanne ordered a skein of this base for me. Um, she's going to dye an approximation of this color so that I can finish off the shawl, but it is a silk and merino blend it is so soft, it is so lightweight, um, and really I cannot wait to be able to wear it, so I can't wait to fix this. Um, I won't talk about what this one was because I don't want to sound like I'm bad mouthing it because I love the yarn, I just don't like this. Um, yeah, so, gonna be setting that aside. I had it 
finished other than this little green tip on the 17th of June, which was two days before I had planned. I was doing one lace point per day, um, but I ran out of yarn. So it has to wait. It's in timeout until I can finish it and not have it look like it does right now. Um, yeah. So, um, whips. I got cast on itis last night. I finished that cowl. I finished the Coriolis effect and I cast on three things all at once. So I do have three projects that are like one row, but I'm going to show them to you anyway because the yarn is really pretty. Um, okay. So my first for real whip is my Find Your Fade by Andrea Mowry. That's in my jumbo dancing whale bag oh. by you so and so. It is quite the large bag. And since you last saw this, I did finish out an entire color. Once I start knitting on this, I really don't like to put it down. I do want to get through it and finish it. So I was down here where this stitch marker is, and or progress keeper. And this progress keeper is a star by Pitter Patter Polymer. You've seen it before. Um, and it's just there, hanging out, marking where I was. I'm going to move it up when I finish podcasting today. Um, so this whole find your fade is knit on size four signature needles and I'm using tra -la, la sock yarn by Lambstrings. My first color is Venery. Then we move into Yellow Moss. Then Corazon. Then Monarch. And now this deep reddish colorway is Siafu. Um, I knit a hat for, that's not it. I knit a hat for one of my cousins out of Siafu. I do like it. It's got a lot of um, complex colors in there. I have to block my face so that you can see. It's got some green. It's got some yellow. Very interesting colors. After I finish with the Siafu, I will be moving into Sexy Librarian. And then finishing off with Rosario. So I do have three colors left. I've cast on, or cast on, I've started with the first of those last colors, and this shawl is enormous. It's fun to knit, but oh my god, it's going to be huge. Everybody keeps saying that. It's so big. Um, yeah, I felt for a long time, it sat in time out for like a year, and I felt for so long that I really just um, couldn't finish it. I felt like the colors were off, that I had mixed them up, not that they weren't fading. Um, but I'm in love with it again. So I haven't touched it in about two weeks. I had put it aside planning to record the podcast. I said, all right, I finished a color. I can talk about it and feel good about it. And then I didn't record. So here it is. Um, hopefully that will be finished relatively oh. soon. I'd like to have it done to bring it to Rhinebeck as an option. Um, I know when I go to Rhinebeck, I usually bring a ton of knits to choose from. This year I actually have sweaters, um, so that'll be interesting. That'll be fun. I've not had that before. I've not had real grown-up long sleeve sweaters, but I have that as an option this year. Um, but I do always bring a bunch of shawls so that I can pick and choose what I'd like to wear. So um, my next whip I didn't talk about last week or last time, a month, last month. Um, I didn't talk about it because I hadn't worked on it, but this is in my, uh, sorry, I have to look down at my notes. It's in my Sunny Stitch Studios Matryoshka bag, the nesting dolls, uh, detachable strap, contrasting zipper, it's got a yellow liner inside, it's very pretty. Um, and this is the 003 camisole by Veronica Jope. Um, I have to take off, I have some extra stitch marker, or extra progress keepers on there that I was using for myself. I had to keep track of how much knitting I had done in a day, as opposed to in the month of the podcast, of the, since the last podcast. So here it is. Uh, not a lot to look at right now. I've got a grilled cheese stitch marker by Pitter Patter Polymer. I've got, uh, Pure Silk Yarn by Debbie Bliss Yarns. It's a single ply celery colored silk. It's 100% silk. It's a discontinued yarn, so if you like it, unfortunately, you can't easily get it. You might be able to find it in a D-stash or on eBay. Um, 
but yeah. So I knit about three or four inches since you last saw this. This grilled cheese is where I was when I last showed this to you. I do have several ends that have to be woven in. I figure um, I'll get a little bit further and then take care of some of them. Um, this is the project that I was struggling to get gauge on. So it calls for a size six needle. Um, it calls for fingering weight yarn on a size six needle. So I looked at this, at this pure silk, and it says on Ravelry that it's DK. Um, and it didn't look like a DK to me. So what I did was I did my wraps per inch. Um, I got 21 wraps per inch with this yarn. So fingering weight yarn is supposed to be 19 to 22 wraps per inch. This was firmly within there. And DK, according this is according to Craftsy, is supposed to be 12 to 14 wraps per inch. So I said, all right, it should be a fingering weight yarn. It should be fine. So I cast on for my gauge swatch with the six and I did not get anywhere close to gauge. I have that right here. Not good. So then I went back and I tried it with a four, didn't work, a three, didn't work. And I wound up on a two, a size two. This has the same number of rows and columns and everything, um, stitches. So they should theoretically uh, match up, but they don't. Um, what Thaddeus of Archaeology Knits says is that he thinks it's because if you're using a regular, I have some yarn over here, if you're using a regular fingering weight yarn, it kind of, when you pull on it, it gives, it gets thinner. Um, when you pull on this yarn, it doesn't, it stays the same thickness. So he thinks that maybe I didn't stretch it tightly enough for my gauge swatch, or not gauge swatch, for my wraps per inch. I don't know. I like the drape that I'm getting with the twos. It's fine. Um, it feels like it's taking longer to knit, even though I know it's not because it's the same number of stitches per inch. But when it's done, I'm going to be very happy to have it done. It has braided straps and it's an A-line shape. So it should go with a lot of things. It should be very comfortable. And if we have another 90 degree year at Rhinebeck or 75 degree, whatever it was last year at Rhinebeck, I'll be able to wear it then in addition to over the summer um i'm hoping that i finish it by the end of summer it's only june so there's a chance i will be entering that sh uh camisole into the those summer knits cal though the those summer knits cal is being sponsored by the girls in the yarn cafe um and they are i, I believe you have to do dk or lighter for a top you can make a shawl you can make shorts um and that ends about the same time as the summer shawl along does so if you wanted to double dip your shawl into the those summer knits count please do both suzanne and i are happy with that and i believe the girls in the yarn cafe are also okay with double dipping check their rules i know i'm okay with it i'm pretty sure suzanne is okay with it um we want you to have as many chances as possible to win a prize so go for it double dip triple dip whatever you can do Okay, my next whip is new since the last time I podcasted. Um, I finished the finished the Hot Brook shawl, that pink one, and I decided that I should cast on another one because, yes, I finished it. That means that I participated in the cow, yay, or the shawl along. That's good. But I want to keep going. I want to be able to knit along or crochet along or make along with all of you throughout the shawl along. So I decided to cast on another shawl. So this is living in my By the Bay Yarn Company canvas drawstring bag. Uh, this is a medium bag and this is a four stain shawl. So if you look inside, I have plenty of room. You can kind of see that there's a lot of space in there. Um, the shawl itself doesn't fill up the bag. It, it's awesome. Um, it makes me very happy to know that I have so much space in here but this is the shawl I've been meaning to make so I cast on the exploration station shawl by Stephen West it's my first ever Stephen West knit um, I am mixing bases which I know he would wholeheartedly approve of 
And I'm just about through, I'm five stitches away from being through with section one, which is the short row showdown. So the short row showdown is a um, set series of six short row wedges that you knit out of your four colors with one of the colors being the border in between them. So that's my dark brown yarn. Um, yeah, and the next section is supposed to be brioche, but I've never learned to brioche. It's two color brioche. And I don't really love the look of two color brioche, which is why I've never learned. It's not that I don't think I can do it, it's that I don't love it. Um, so I don't wanna take the time to learn a new skill that I don't love the look of. Um, on this shawl, it's only about two inches or three inches of two color brioche. It's less than 20 rows. Um, so what I might be doing is modifying the pattern and doing a two color corrugated rib instead um, so that I can get through it without learning to brioche for not really um, much of a reason other than this much. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, but my yarns that I'm using are all four different bases. So this brown is called Brown Forest. It's by Bayhaven Short Tails. Uh, so it's 80% Finnish Landrace, which is a breed, an heirloom breed of sheep. Um, and they're owned by a woman named Lisa, who takes care of them and shears them and gets their wool milled into beautiful yarns. So this is the Landrace with nylon and silk. It's her sock base, so that's the natural brown. Then my color B, I'll show you a bigger wedge, not the first incidence of it. My color B is, again, Tra La La Sock by um, Lambstrings Yarn. This is the Sparks colorway, so this is a, uh, a merino nylon blend. Then my color C is, again, by Bayhaven Short Tails. This is 100% Finnish Landrace, and this is her fingering base. It's completely natural, it's called white. Um, and it's 100% wool, so it is a little bit scratchy, but it does feel nice. It's not, you know, so rough that you can't put it against your skin. It's quite nice. It's got a lot of, um, I guess they call it loft, right? It's very fluffy. Um, so there's that. And then my fourth yarn is from Hampton Artistic Yarns. And it's very important that you look up Hampton Artistic with the IC on the end yarns because there was drama with somebody trying to ride the Dyer's coattails, and we don't want to give that person business. So it's Hampton Artistic Yarns um, that you would be looking up. And this is the Dew base, like the number two in French, D-O-U-X. The Dew base, which is an MCN 801010, um, and it is in the Corundum colorway. So that's this bright pink. Um, the next section, I believe, utilizes B and C. So it will be the uh, speckle and the natural going together in that brioche, but ribbing section. I may even just rib with the tra -la, la sock, um, but I'm not sure. So this is being knit on size six needles. They're Chow Goo Red Lace. I don't have any markers or anything in it quite yet. I will place one um, for the next podcast so that you guys can see how far I've come or how far I've not come if I haven't worked on it uh, like the Taumini shawl I haven't touched it um, so I want to do shawl along shawls I will just not talk about it but the plan is to get this one finished relatively soon because I have another shawl that I cast on that's a super secret test knit but I can show it to you because it's only one row um, that will be for the shawl along as well so, yeah, I still have more whips. I told you it was gonna be the whip parade. Um, here we go. All right, so as I've said before, I play World of Warcraft for the Horde. Um, my guild's name is Hordes of Hell. We're on the Alexstrasza server, US server. There's two, there's the Euro and the US. Um, we're on the Alexstrasza server, we're Horde side. We are always looking for good players, DPS mostly, and heals with a DPS off spec. 
we, we're pretty good on tanks, but heals and DPS, we can always use them, especially with the flex rating. We are done rating for the expansion, but if you are interested in joining us for the next expansion, totally welcome to. Shameless plug. Anyway, my next project is for a World of Warcraft friend. Um, Kark, or Rob, and his wife have just had their first baby, and I asked him, because I know that he appreciates handmade things, he has handmade a bunch of the furniture in their house, his groomsmen gifts at his wedding were handmade, um, so I know he appreciate it, appreciates it, so I asked him if he would like me to knit something for his firstborn, and he said, oh my god, of course. And then I asked him, would you like me to knit an elephant for your firstborn? And he was like, an elephant? Hell yes. So he had an elephant on his registry, apparently. Um, baby bo was born. He's healthy. He's happy. And uh, Kark and his wife are adjusting to parenthood. So I'm knitting the Blissa elephant. And this is by Bagsmith. Um, the Bagsmith, the woman who designs these patterns, has stopped designing patterns, as far as I know. They are discontinued. However, there is contact info down here, so if you wanted to look into it and see if you could get your hands on it, go for it. I bought this pattern, this hard copy of this pattern, at the knitting place in Port Washington. I don't know if they have more copies, um, but if they do, and you wanted to make it, I'm sure they'd be willing to sell it to you. So this is the Blissa Elephant, and I had seen this elephant as a sample in another yarn shop years ago and wasn't able to purchase the pattern because I didn't want to sign up for the class. So I had been hunting for the pattern for years and when I finally found it, I had to have it. So now I'm making it for uh, somebody that I've known for 10 years. <laughs> Lots of wow. This project, this elephant, is living in a paper or threads bag with more gnomes, more lady gnomes um, on it. And the inside is lined with this very quaint sort of calico fabric. Um, it reminds me of Little House on the Prairie. This is a pretty large bag. The only problem that I have with this bag, and I should have known because it's like this in the Etsy listing, I should have paid more attention, the top row of gnomes have their heads cut off. I would have preferred if they cut it off differently at the bottom and had the heads on the top row but that was an artistic choice. Um, it's a nice bag though. It's large. It's a size large. I believe she has an even larger size on her site. Um, but this is holding several skeins of bulky yarn. So it's holding an elephant. Um, so far I have two feet done. They're really fast. I just have been working on shawls and haven't touched this as much. So I have one foot and then I have another foot somewhere. It's exactly the same. You make four. Um, so I have two feet, and you stuff them through the cast-on hole in the front after you've attached them to the body. So these are two of my elephant feet. I'm working on the third now. Uh, you're supposed to do it on VPNs, but I don't like those. So I'm using two circular needles instead. So I have the start of a bottom of a foot right here, the dark gray. And um, when I work on it, it flies. I made these in like two hours, but I have to actually sit down and do it. So the yarn that I'm using is uh, from Michaels. So my light gray is wool and threads cozy wool. So this is actual wool um, and it's the pewter colorway. And then my darker color is charcoal, and this is Charisma, which is a 100% acrylic blend. Both of these yarns um, are hand washed dry flat, but because it's a stuffy, I would think that you would just want to spot clean it. Um, yeah, so those are my two colors. It's for a baby. They're not going to know that I didn't use fancy indie dyed yarn, and I probably wouldn't use fancy indie dyed yarn for this kind of stuffy. So. I plan to make one for myself, and I will probably be using these very same yarns to do it. Um, they're very soft. They feel nice to cuddle, especially the Charisma. Charisma, if you've never worked with it, um, I've never worked with this cozy wool before. I can't speak to the durability of it, 
but if you have never worked with Charisma before, it is a very budget-friendly acrylic yarn that holds up and is super soft. Um, this is probably my favorite bulky budget yarn. Um, I have a, you know those bags that comforters come in? I have a queen size comforter bag full of all different colors of Charisma that my friend Christine gave me when she moved. Um, it's a favorite. I enjoy it a lot. Uh, it's great for hats and scarves and warm winter accessories for people who just want to be able to toss it in the in the wash. Um, works well. Or people who say they're allergic to wool. Um, yeah, so that's that. That's in my paper threads bag. Um, hopefully it will be done relatively soon. Hopefully I motivate myself to work on that um, so that I can get it to that baby before that baby is, you know, going to college and wondering why this crazy person that his dad used to play video games with on the internet is giving him an elephant to go over to college with. Yep, so I want to finish that up and it's in another gnome bag, a new gnome bag, huh? Um, yeah. Three more <laughs> whips. Um, I don't have any notes on these, so, um, I'm going off the cup cuff. This is the super secret mystery shawl pattern. I don't know if I'm actually allowed to talk about it, but if you can tell how this shawl is going to work up from one row of stitches, more power to you. I can't tell. Um, I know what the finished object looks like. I've seen it. Uh, it's beautiful. It will have a second color striped in with this. I'm thinking yellow or dark teal. This is a gift for another World of Warcraft friend, for Trish. Uh, Trish is the maker of Timid Monsters. I've shown them to you before. Um, and I had a photo set that I used to call Mini-Me and post pictures of on Instagram. It met a tragic end. So she's remaking that for me and I'm throwing her a set of bowls um, and knitting her a shawl. So this yarn is the Cuddly and Groovin Sock by Groovy Hughes Fibers. And the color name is complicated and long. It's from her Jonathan and Col Jonathan Colton line. It's called The Light That Filters Down Into My Giant Yellow Eye. Um, so you can see there's splashes of yellow in there and lots of teals and turquoise. I believe it's about some sort of sea creature. So that's what the teals and turquoises are. Um, it's very soft. It is a 75-25 merino nylon blend. It's her lower twist sock yarn. Um, <clears throat> the higher twist is 80-20 twisted and grooving, but this is the low twist one. Um, so I've just cast this on last night. It's got the cast on row and one knit row. Um, Thaddeus was designing this and he was knitting through his second version. The first version was a Christmas gift for his wife Suzanne and I said I'll test knit that for you and I took pictures of his notebook and walked out with it. Um, so he typed it up and sent it to me so that I didn't have to go by his um, handwritten notes. But it is a test knit for a pattern that I'm not sure of the release date of. I don't know if I can show it to you after I've got it further along. Um, but it is a shawl that is an archaeology knits design. Um, I'll show it to you either. I'll show it to you as soon as I get approval from him once it's past this. So <clears throat> there's that. Then I have another test knit, and this test knit is for a hat called the Seamus Slouch Hat. This is another Groovy Hughes colorway. This one is the 8-ply worsted, so again, it's cuddly and groovin, but it's cuddly and groovin worsted. And this is her MacGyver colorway. So it is called Bold and Nosy. I'm famous for that. Um, and it is designed by a member of Suzanne's group by Bridget. Um, I am pulling up the exact information about it. So it's by Bridget Thumel. 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 Sorry, Bridget. Um, and it's Draw Four Designs is her um, design name. I'm going to check with her to make sure I can show off this pattern again once I get further than one row and the cast on. Um, but this is a cabled slouch hat and it 
comes in baby, child, and adult sizes. So that'll be interesting when it's finished to know that I can make it. I'm thinking that with the scrap yarn from this, I might have enough that I can make one for the baby who's getting the elephant. They live up in Maine, so they need lots of warm baby gear. I have a new stitch marker on there. This is from McNitty in McKinney, Texas. Um, it's a yarn store that I had visited when my cousin Christina, when my cousin Chris, married her husband, Chris, um, down in Texas in October, and I fell in love with it. Saw an ad for it on Ravelry, I clicked it, and I wound up buying some stuff that I'll show you during acquisitions in a moment. Um, yeah, it's a great store. If you're ever in McKinney, Texas, check it out. There's two really good knitting stores in town, and it's a cute little town. <clears throat> Alright, my last whip. My last Just Cast On Whip is in a bag by Leslie Jean Knits. Uh, it is a unicorn bag um, with little teeny tiny, I think there's bunnies. No, nope, there's birdies. With little teeny tiny birdies and stars and happy sunflowers and trees. I love this fabric. I think it's adorable. I would totally wear like a dress out of this fabric because I'm an overgrown child. So what I'm making out of this is a pair of vanilla what I'm making that's in this is a pair of vanilla socks this is my first time trying vanilla socks on the nine inch cirques I'm not sure how I feel about it I'm gonna give it a try I'm gonna make the whole pair of socks it'll probably be finished around this time next year because I knit socks so slowly I can sneeze out a shawl but a sock no um, this is the heel toe and cuff colorway and this is the um, body of the sock colorway. It is a self-striping yarn from the Cozy Knitter. This one is called Heartbreaker. It was part of her Valentine's collection. So it's got pink and gray and mauve stripes. Um, and I will be working those up for me. It'll only be my second pair of socks for me. I've given away three, I think, and made one pair for myself. Um, but these will... I'm planning on keeping them. So um, thus far all I've done is a one by one ribbing for five rows, or actually I'm on the fifth row, so for four rows. Um, on size one circulars I cast on 64. I plan to decrease down to 50, uh, down, sorry, down to 60, and then possibly again as I get down to the ankle down to 56. I'm still not really sure what my sock recipe is. I know that the last pair that I made for myself, I did 64 all the way down the leg, and it was a little bit loose. So um, I have to see. But I do have wider calves, so I like the larger size for the um, cuff. So I have five rows done. It's a one by one ribbing on the cuff, and then the rest of it will be just a regular vanilla sock. So it'll be stockinette all the way down and all around. <clears throat> I knit my socks in tandem, by the way. When I do knit socks, I prefer to do it that way. So I do have a second nine inch size one. Um, as soon as I finish the cuff on this one, I will cast on the second cuff. And then I have um, matching balls that I wound. So I'll do one set of stripes on one, one set of stripes on the other, and then go from there so that I work them in tandem um, and don't get second sock syndrome because I am such a slow sock knitter that if I got second sock syndrome, it would be at least three years before I had a pair of socks to wear. Um, so yeah, those are right here, ready to go. Um, those are all my whips. So yeah, last night I finished that cowl and I cast on three whips even though I have, well, those are all my active whips. There are three more in the living room um, that I didn't knit on, so I'm not talking about them. A lot of whips. Um, apparently, binding off that cowl was like the breaking point. And I got cast on itis and I got it bad. So, <clears throat> there's all my whips. They're in a giant pile. I sit on the floor. I've told you this before. They're in a giant pile, like off screen over there. It's a lot. A lot of project bags. Anyway, um, acquisitions. I did buy a little bit of yarn. I shouldn't be. I really shouldn't be. Um, but I did. Um, so I have more coming as well. One skein, I think. Um, but this is what I bought from the, from Mick, from Mick Nitty. 
This is a kit to make the Karen mittens. The Karen mittens are by, I don't know, but it's a kit that was made for Lux Adorna, which is 100% cashmere. So they're double layered mittens and you can see them kind of here. Um, and I think they will be nice and warm. So mine are going to be black and pink. This is a sport weight yarn from Lux Adorna. It is 100% cashmere. These are gonna be the softest mittens ever. Um, and the reason I picked this particular colorway is that it matches my darling flamingos who really still don't have names. They need names, I think. Um, one of them is missing a leg, this guy. That's why he's tied to the yarn. <laughs> but I love my flamingos, so this is gonna match them. It's going to be mittens. Hopefully I will make them for this year. Actually, I'm hoping that I make them for Rhinebeck because if it is not 75 degrees, you usually do need mittens. And I'll have them. The other acquisition that I have, I did not purchase. It was gifted to me. So this is yarn from Switzerland. Uh, Thaddeus from Archaeology Knits went on a trip for a conference and he came back with some yarn for me. So this is Maglia Mania and the dyer is Babette Eiman. She has a shop in Bern um, and she dyes most of the yarn for it herself. Uh, so the shop is I believe called Maglia Mania as well. Uh, yeah. There's a receipt in the bag, but it's for a chocolatier, so it's not going to tell me if her shop name is not the same as her uh, yarn company name, but I think it is. Maglia Mania. This is another sport weight yarn. I'm kind of obsessed with sport lately, so this was a very uh, fortunate, well-timed gift of sport weight yarn. So it's sport. It is 100% merino, super washed. Um, it is 300 meters, which somebody who's more mathematically minded than I am could tell you the yardage of. Um, it doesn't have a colorway name, but it looks to me, uh, what it reminds me of is Monet's water lilies. It reminds me of the water in the garden. Um, so I'm very excited about this. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to make with it. When Suzanne was in Germany, she brought me back this Drachenvula, which is also a sport weight. Very exciting. Um, and I have plans for that one. I also have this skein of sport, which doesn't quite go, but I had made plans for this, um, a very simple cowl I was going to make, and I may switch this to what I was going to make with this one because it's such a simple design that it'll show this off and then I can use this um, bluey tealy color for a um, project that has some lace or something on it um, that's a little bit more complex. We'll see. I'm not ready to cast on with any of it yet. It just looks pretty. Actually, it looks kind of pretty all together. <laughs> but that's not the plan. So those will be three separate projects at some point and they'll be beautiful. Um, so that's really all I think I have to talk about. Um, this Saturday is the opening day for the swap that I'm participating in. There's another one that runs from June to October, I think. I don't know that I'll be participating in that one. I usually wait until the Christmas swap. Um, that's what I did last year anyway. So I'm probably gonna wait, but we'll see. Um, yeah, that's all that I have to talk about this month. Hopefully I will not wait another month in between podcasts because um, I know I have more yarn coming and hopefully I'll have some finished objects because I have that hat that I just cast on and that's worsted so I should be able to have that finished in two weeks. Um, yeah, so I'll have something other than the parade of eight million whips to talk about next time. Um, yeah, and I know that I have some yarn coming in addition to the goodies that I'll have from the swap this weekend. So, yeah. Hmm. I think that's it. 100% for sure. Uh, my mom's having her eye surgery. Cross your fingers for her. She's very nervous. Um, 
and that's all. I'm gonna go to the studio, I'm gonna throw some stuff out of some nice clay, uh, and stay cool in some air conditioning because it is hot in here. Right. Have a good two weeks. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you like what you saw and subscribe to my channel. All of my social media contact info will be uh, in the down bar as well as on the bottom of the screen over there. So have a good two weeks. Thank you. Bye.